RBD Defense. The LC-8 Ajaz is by far the worst modern fighter jet in the entire world. The recent crash at the Dubai Air Show is just the tip of the iceberg. The Tejas has been a failure for multiple decades, something that even the Air Chief Marshal of the Indian Air Force acknowledges. With the Tejas, it's not about what went wrong, it's about what didn't go wrong. This is a story about failure, rejection, corruption, government pressure and fatal accidents. Welcome to the complete Tejas timeline. The story of the Tejas begins 42 years ago in 1983 when India launched the Light Combat Aircraft or LCA program. The goal of this program was to create an indigenous fighter jet to replace India's MiG-21s. Progress moved at a slow pace as the government would not allocate substantial funding until three years later in 1986. Also in 1986, a program to build an indigenous engine for the Tejas called Kaveri was also launched. One year later in 1987, 30 engineers from French company Dassault were brought in to help design the Tejas. In 1990, seven years after the LCA program was launched, the design for the Tejas was finalized. The French influence in the design of the Tejas was immediately visible as it was basically a smaller Mirage 2000. This design choice would go on to plague the Tejas for the rest of its life. The small canardless delta wing design limited fuel capacity and made handling the jet at low speeds a nightmare. Delta wings are great for high speed performance, just look at the MiG-21. But the trade-off for this is that at low speeds, Delta Wing aircraft experience high levels of drag and have poor sustained turn rates. Modern Delta Wing fighter jets like the J-10C and Rafale resolve this issue by adding canards. But the Tejas doesn't have any canards because its design was already outdated at inception. By trying to make a replacement for the MiG-21, India had made an aircraft equally as outdated. This was the era of powerful radars and BVR combat. High speed performance meant nothing. It was all about how big and powerful your radar was. Because of the Tejas' small size, there was no room to add a large powerful radar and the small delta winged body was tight and internally cramped which made upgrading the Tejas nearly impossible. In short, the design of the Tejas was a failure in every single aspect. Seven years later, in 1997, India started the MMR or Multimode Radar Program to create an indigenous radar for the Tejas. In 2001, 11 years after the Tejas' design was finalized, the Tejas conducted its maiden flight. This means it took the Tejas 18 years from the beginning of its program to its maiden flight, 1983 to 2001. For comparison, it took the JF-17 5 years to go from launch of program to maiden flight and it took the Sabja's Gripen 6 years. So 18 years is an unusually long time for an aircraft to go from beginning of program to maiden flight. But still, the made-in flight for the LC Tejas, despite taking 18 years, was still a significant moment of hope for India. The Indian government even ordered 20 units of the Tejas in 2006. Things were finally looking up. It seemed like after 20 plus years, India would finally have its own fighter jet. But this period of hope would be short-lived as India's indigenous radar program for the Tejas would be scrapped in 2009 because of the radar's unstable tracking and heating related issues. India would approach Israel for the Tejas's radar, but this would only be the beginning of India's dependency on foreign countries for major components of the Tejas as just one year later in 2010, India's indigenous cavalry engine would be declared unfit for the Tejas because of its lack of thrust, heavy weight 
and the engine literally melting during testing. India would approach America for the General Electric F404 engine, becoming completely reliant on America for the production of the Tejas. In 2013, the Indian government tried to force the Indian Air Force into inducting the Tejas into service. But the Indian Air Force refused, citing flight instability, weak thrust, limited weapons clearance, and safety restrictions on maneuvers as their reasons. Three years later, after fixing zero of the issues brought up by the Indian Air Force, the Indian government forced the Indian Air Force to induct the Tejas anyway, citing national reputation as their justification. But this induction was purely ceremonial as the Tejas would never be used during conflict, instead being grounded during both the 2019 conflict, where the MiG-21 was present but the Tejas wasn't, and the 2025 Operation Sindur conflict where the Mirage 2000 was present but the Tejas was again nowhere to be seen. Basically, the Indian government forced the Indian Air Force into inducting the Tejas into service in 2016 so the government could use the Tejas in promotional videos to keep up the facade of having an indigenous fighter jet rather than inducting the Tejas because it would be an asset during conflict. Instead of fixing any of the billion issues of the Tejas so it could actually be used during conflict, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, the uh, producer or the manufacturer of the Tejas, announced in 2018 that they would be making the Tejas MK1A. The Tejas MK1A would be the same as the regular Tejas, but it would have upgraded avionics and a different general electric engine. But the production rate of the Tejas MK1A would be extremely slow as General Electric would continuously delay engine delivery and the weapons integration issues from 2010 still persist. India's Air Chief Marshal blames HAL, HAL blames General Electric and General Electric doesn't care because India needs them, not the other way around. The result? After 42 years of launching the LCA program, India still has no combat-capable fighter jet. If any of the Tejas inducted into the Indian Air Force were actually combat-capable, where were they during Operation Sindur? Unless you are admitting that the Mirage 2000 is a better fighter jet than the Tejas, there is simply no reason for the Mirage 2000 to attack Pakistan while the Tejas exists. The Tejas is a complete failure and solely exists to be used in promotional videos for the government. Now that you know the entire domestic history of the Tejas, let's see how the Tejas has done internationally. In 2022, the Indian Defense Minister said that they had offered the Tejas to Malaysia and that Argentina, Australia, Egypt, the United States of America, Indonesia, and the Philippines were all interested in buying the Tejas. The Indian Defense Minister announcing that seven countries were interested in buying the Tejas was obviously a massive deal. But this would go on to be a humiliation ritual for India. Malaysia would choose the Korean FA-50 Eagle over the Tejas. The FA-50 is an advanced trainer aircraft not even a fighter jet like the Tejas, so this was very humiliating for the Tejas. The Philippines would also choose the FA-50 over the Tejas, and Argentina, Australia, the United States of America, Egypt, and Indonesia would all go on to reject the Tejas. This makes the Tejas the most rejected fighter jet in the entire world, and the crash at the Dubai Air Show has permanently destroyed any export future of the Tejas. So the Tejas doesn't have a future in the Indian Air Force as a combat asset, and it doesn't have a future in the export market. And after the crash at the Dubai Air Show, it might not even have a future in air shows because of how dangerous it is to fly. In 2021, a Tejas crashed during a training mission. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited blamed the pilot but others cited flight control issues, issues that the Tejas has had since 2010. This brings us to current day, the Dubai Airshow crash. Remember when I told you 
about canardless delta-winged aircraft being extremely unstable at low speeds? Well, all of you saw what happened with your own eyes. The truth of the matter is that the Tejas has worse low-speed maneuverability than a MiG-21. The design of the Tejas was already 10 years outdated in 1990, now it's 40 years outdated. The Tejas is just a complete failure in every regard. Thank you for watching the video till the end. If you want to support my work, like the video, subscribe to the channel and of course leave a comment. I will see you in the next video.